Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I almost feel like the weatherman here, but uh, let me give you a couple of comments. Uh, there's no doubt in an industry like ours, uh, if, if weather becomes extreme, it does have a, a big impact. And when we look at the quarter, uh, July and August were uh, unfortunately uh, severely impacted by weather across uh, both Western Europe and Central Eastern Europe. So I know you mentioned the UK, but it's actually a phenomenon we've seen throughout. So we estimate around two thirds of the drop we've seen in, in the European uh, region is driven by weather itself. The rest is driven by a, a softer consumer environment. I might have to give you that one. We moaned about the weather for a number of weeks, so we might have to just accept that it was a bad one for the earnings too. In terms of what you're seeing, though, on some of the, the strategies around alcohol-free and some of the uh, more microbrewery style of uh, product that you have on the market, this seems to be still gaining traction. Yeah, you're right. It's, uh, it's actually a very encouraging sign to see during the quarter. It was a tough volume quarter for the whole industry, but it's very nice to see alcohol-free brews um, uh, up 6%, which is quite broad-based, and we've launched a lot of innovations within that, uh, that segment, so it's great to see that it's take, taking off very well. It's something we expect to see a lot of growth of in the coming years. And at the same time, uh, our premium portfolio actually continued to outperform the, the rest of the portfolio. It can be a concern when we're seeing a consumer weakening, like we're seeing across all consumer goods at the moment, that premium may suffer. But it's very nice to see that premium outperforms uh, our mainstream brands. So I have to say it's encouraging to see uh, those trends. Uh, Jakob, what isn't encouraging is the court in St. Petersburg, which imposed unspecified interim measures against you. Do you just want to give us a bit more of an update for our viewers on, on the difficulty in extricating yourself from Russia? Yeah, no, happy to. Uh, as, as many of you will know, we, uh, we announced a uh, sale of our business in Russia back in June, which was then uh, suddenly changed with a presidential decree during July when uh, temporary management was inserted by the Russian government and uh, basically taking over our business, uh, us at Carlsberg keeping the, uh, the legal rights to our shares, but otherwise not being in control. Uh, what you refer to there is one of many things that is happening uh, right now uh, in terms of that process. Um, all we can say is that we have also today with the results uh, written uh, our business in Russia down to, to zero for the simple reasons that we do not see any chance that we will uh, uh, reach an amicable agreement here around the exit of Russia. We're simply refusing to enter into an agreement with the Russian government on these types of terms. Uh, we, it's a very unfortunate situation, but I can guarantee you that uh, we're doing everything we can to protect, protect our people, our assets, and, of course, our rights. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I'm going to move on from Russia, if I may, because we have limited time with you as well. I'm really fascinated in your growth areas. Uh, and look, many, many companies that we've spoken to have been underwhelmed by the performance of the Chinese economic recovery and hence the ramifications from that. If you could first reference China and, and how important that's becoming to you for growth and also what's going on in Southeast Asia where things are less optimistic, sir. Yeah, happy to. So uh, if you look at China, China is important to us. It's uh, our biggest uh, geography now. And uh, we, uh, we grew in China 6% in the quarter. And that is in the context of a Chinese market that we estimate dropped 5 to 6%, the beer market dropping 5 to 6%. So gaining a clear share in China again this quarter. So China is a very important uh, motor for, uh, for, for the business. Unfortunately, the Chinese consumer weakness more broadly is uh, leading to uh, what we're seeing uh, across Southeast Asia, as you're also referencing. It is a tough consumer environment in many parts of Southeast Asia. We're seeing uh, most um, uh, beer markets and beverage markets uh, declining at the moment. And uh, of course, that's also impacting us. Uh, I would say um, Asia is a big growth market for us. And hence, in most of these markets, um, uh, be it Vietnam, be it Laos, et cetera, we are continuing to, uh, to take share. Uh, albeit in a declining market, but we do also expect that to come back next year. But right now, the Asian consumer is, is in a worse place than uh, if you just look back six months. And of course, there's a massive China component, component in that.